Welcome to the App Advisory Show, your fortnightly dose of all things cloud accounting, apps, and app advisory. Hey guys, welcome to the App Advisory Show. It's Matt here again. Uh, we're going to be having a great chat today around Cresgo, and I've got Ralph. Hey Ralph, how are you doing? Very well. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a great honour. Not a problem, not a problem. An honour, I'll, I'll, I'll take that any day. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Ralph, do you want to um, intro yourself and, and what you're doing for Cresco? Sure. So I'm the co-founder here at Cresco, and my other co-founder sitting right next door to me in our office here in Notting Hill. Um, we have built an, an accounts receivable solution, so uh, invoice checkout solution, which rivals Stripe and PayPal, but we use the open banking rail. So in the UK, that's uh, sort of faster payments, and in the EU, that's what we call SEPA. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm always intrigued as like where these like solutions appear from and what's the sort of driver to it. So I'm intrigued because I think I'd be thinking in this world where, you know, Stripe and WorldPay and PayPal, they're huge incumbents of that space, not using the same technologies agreed, but I, I'm intrigued to see like where the solution came from and what you thought about using the, the open banking framework. So at my last company, I would definitely pay a lot of invoices. We were actually a lending company and uh, often people would borrow to pay invoices and I would ask for these invoices and I would try to pay them manually. That way I would ensure that the recipient would get the money and not the borrower because the borrower could go off to Disneyland and <laughs> spend the money, which definitely happened. But it was at that process that I realized that paying an invoice is incredibly manually burdensome, um, especially via bank transfer. So entering in that account number, the sort code, um, the, the payer's name and actually even more so in international invoices where you've got to put in IBANs and SWIFT and you can't even find out where they are within your banking app. And so the difference or the disparity between walking to work in the morning and getting a coffee and paying for it via sort of contactless medium and late in the day manually paying these invoices was huge. So you're like, well, this is a really boring task and it's a complete waste of my time but I'm the only one that can do it in the company. So w why does that difference exist? And it exists for sort of various reasons. I think car payments are really good where there's a huge bottleneck, like at the supermarket, and, and you're willing to sort of accept huge amounts of fees just to get people through that checkout as quickly as yeah. possible. But on an invoice, you're, lots of businesses aren't willing to accept two, 3% in fees because the work has already been done and you just want to send it out. And so it doesn't work so well. And also there are payment limitations with, you know, I can't pay a, a million pound invoice with my Visa debit card. Yeah. Okay. You know, it doesn't work. So there were some technological reasons why card payments weren't best suited for invoices. I think one was very much uh, the fees are very expensive to the payment limits and three there are settlement times so like car payments take three or four days to settle and then because i was in the fintech ecosystem i came across this psd2 initiative which is really boring but it basically says <laughs> it, it came out of the european banking crisis where the governments were bailing out banks and they looked at the banks and they were going well you guys have behaved incredibly badly but we can't afford to let you um fall apart so we're going to give you loads of money for behaving badly but we've got to think of a way to make the world more efficient and they rightly came up with open banking and open banking is a technological advancement that allows us to sort of make more efficient payments by an account to account mechanism and i saw that and i was like oh this would work very well in the b2b space so that's kind of it it was like the problem was paying invoices is really bad but the technology wasn't there at that time to fix it but then open banking comes along and it's like oh that would be really good technology to pay for invoices yeah i think that's uh, that's really interesting and i take your point about you know going down and get a coffee and you, you're doing contactless and then you're back actually having to type a load of stuff in and manual error and actually like you say finding the information i, I remember t talking to someone uh, a couple of years ago and they were saying it's really painful that i can book a holiday online 
so easily you know a few clicks of a button put your card details in bang mm -hmm. and then to actually book the annual leave with work was an absolute mission you know i've got to go yeah. find these forms and so it's, it's like that I think we're seeing more and more at the moment where your your personal world of technology use and then your business world of technology use can be very vast. It's almost going, you know, you go into an old realm when you work into walk into that office or that system scenario where you've been in this modern world for everything else in and around that. So I think people are really starting to see that gap, aren't they, and feel that gap and think, well, if I can do this at, down at a coffee shop, why can't I do this at a uh, in my own office or my own accounts? Exactly. I mean, often sort of B2C products are far more efficient than B2B products. And I don't know why that is. It might be that we're all consumers. So there's a far more, the, I, the idea pool is far greater than the amount of people that say run businesses. Um, but yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so when did you guys, when did you, when was sort of the inception of the business? Then when did you launch? Like what was that sort of time frame and time so perspective like? There were certainly lots of walks in the park and, dinner table conversations and whiteboarding <laughs> sessions and you know I, the idea was probably far more wild and crazy beforehand and then we narrowed it down into something sort of quite hopefully quite simple and intuitive which is just an invoice checkout but we first put boots on the ground in march 2020 and we had raised 700,000 pounds from what you might call friends, fools, and families. <laughs> and we were running around and we got this money and so that we need this money to build the next PayPal and the next drive and the next great. And then finally they had all committed. And then we had brought on our first engineer who's still here today and is an absolute rock star. And then it was like, great, we've got everything, but we hadn't had the money in the bank. And then COVID came in March, 2020. So I yeah. got quite nervous and stock markets had dropped 30 percent people probably thought they were going to drop another 30 percent i just remember texting everybody via whatsapp and there were a lot of no responses and it's like yeah thanks for signing the deed um the money hasn't arrived yet when can we expect it and it, fortunately everybody came through um and you know i think they're quite happy with where we've come so far yeah. brilliant okay so that was 2020 and then how so that, that was march 2020 happened? and yeah. that allowed us to um put boots on the ground start building up some infrastructure get all our regulatory license in place we um got a deal with zero which was great during the you know over the sort of next 12 months so we were able to build the integration with zero uh, on board some early customers get some feedback iterate on the product refine it show a little bit of early traction and then in October 21, we raised over sort of three million pounds. And that is now to just build out more and more products and more and more features over the next sort of 12 to 18 months. And we're now a team of uh, 60 people or something like that. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Which is great. So when was like the first version? So you did like a feedback and proof of concept type of scenario and then moved into what, what sort of time frame is that? I think, I mean, it's embarrassing to sort of look back at what the first version probably looked like. <laughs> and we, we were getting proper traction in June 21. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, that, that's when it was, okay, this is works, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop getting my friends to test it. And I'm, I'm happy to sort of put it out to genuine businesses and, and not worried about you know, losing their money or anything. And we haven't lost anybody's money. So like it's, it's all good. It works very, very well now. Um, Brilliant. Um, okay, that's a good time. So March 2020 and then sort of June 21, it starts to come to life. And I think it's probably around August, I think it came on my radar, to be fair. Yes, I think that sort of it. makes sense. In September, we went to our first uh, trade show and that was probably quite good where we could actually demo it in front of yeah. people. And it wasn't just cold calling in or online screen sharing it was like you know try it yourself and you know, th th that's what we're always trying to do is get it into people's hands because open banking payments are quite new maybe you know within your audience we've heard about it a lot but i don't think a huge amount of people pay via an open banking mechanism on a daily basis so, um, i know you know my mother or my brothers and sisters certainly haven't 
so yeah. that was a great opportunity to show look this is how it works it's it's super yeah. efficient uh, you know you can process a hundred thousand pounds in real time without any fees yeah yeah it's um it is and, and i have used open bank and you are right it's amazing how that how swift that transaction is it's it's pretty amazing and uh, the visibility of it so so yeah fully agree so uh yeah if you're listening and you've not had a look at some open banking have a look at cresgo and and uh, go from there so like what are some of the key features and what what have you got on the on the roadmap for uh, for the product the roadmap's super exciting so i okay. I, I always get quite excited about the backlog and so like an impatient kid come on let's go <laughs> let's go let's go, let's go. <laughs> it's going to be cool i think the the key features are that we have this checkout button on your invoice. So you send out your invoice as normal. You do not need to use another tool. You don't need to download another app. You just Once you've connected to Cresco, which takes 30 seconds, and people do it the entire time, um, you, you're sending out your invoices as normal. And then you'll, all your clients and customers just have this free checkout solution. So it's that kind of, I, I didn't want to build a tool where, where users need to learn something else. It's yeah, agreed. Embedded checkout solution. It doesn't require any training. And then we've now also released recurring payments, which I think we're the first and the only open banking company to um, run recurring payments. So that's great. So you don't need to rely on direct debit, especially the sort of instant monthly payments and then this all automatically reconciles within your accountancy software so the minute that it's paid the invoice gets marked off as paid it can't get paid twice and we've built it sort of for accountants and bookkeepers and they can now add their customers within the app so that's the other thing you know small business owners are incredibly busy running their shops and trying to keep everything afloat and it's you know we want them to benefit from our product and how do you make it as easy for them to benefit it's like well just make it really easy for potentially who they trust their accountant to add them so that's what we've done and then going forward there are i'm, I'm very interested in international payments so we're talking very much about domestic payments now yeah and if we think that uh b2c payment is super convenient so then we were trying to fix the b2b invoice payment because that's certainly less convenient and put a more friction point well even less convenient than that is maybe paying an invoice into china or yes. south america where you have very complicated addresses and ibans and swift codes and there's very little visibility as to where that payment is while it's you know left well, your account yeah. and arrived at the recipient's account and you don't really get a strong confirmation that it's arrived at the right account so yeah. this is what we're quite excited about okay yeah and as uh, both parts of that, i was receiving money and uh, sending money internationally you, you are pretty blind as to what's gone on once you've pressed that button uh, it's very hard yeah. to see where you are in the process so i, I think that's a, 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 going to be a great uh, consideration and uh, and feature that uh, you're going to bring into the product and is that You've mentioned that a couple of times. You mentioned that at the start around doing the international payment. So that feels like a bit of a personal, it is a a personal, personal triumph so, when you get that through. I mean, I had, I certainly, I paid a lot of invoices at my last company. And just by the law of statistics, sometimes I paid the wrong person. Um, <laughs> okay. or, or I entered the wrong yeah. uh, number. Maybe I was tired or incompetent. And... We didn't really know. And then to try and call back that money and the whole banking system is pretty messed up. Like it's, you know, your bank doesn't even know where it is. I mean, that's part of the problem. And I won't go into it, but that whole Nostro Vostro banking is, is, is terrible system. It's really archaic. So I think to resolve that would be a huge victory in making something that's really painful, quite frictionless. But I'm also generally interested in encouraging trade. And I know, you know, our governments are quite nationalistic at the moment, but I like the idea of um, countries specializing on what they do, working together, trading more conveniently between countries. And the easier we can do that, um, you know, that's our small way of hopefully helping build a better economy. So one of the key features on the roadmap now is international payments. Is there anything else up and coming which is uh, less personal to you? And, and, and there's, on there's the there is this product, and I don't know if we're getting to, to uh, 
techie or specific into open banking called okay. a variable recurring payment, which okay. I wouldn't say, I don't, I mean, you've got products in beta and then you've got products in alpha. And this is definitely before alpha. Um, okay. <laughs> and and that's not just for us, that's for everybody in the ecosystem. Okay. But I think it might become live and you know market ready in Q1 23. And okay. so that would be quite exciting. And what that will allow us to do is replace that card on file market. And the card on yeah, file okay. is what you experience when you check out of Uber or Amazon. They've essentially stored your 16 digit numbers and your personal security codes and your CVCs. And yes, they're encrypted, but they still have them somewhere in some database. Mm -hmm. And every time you leave the Uber, they're calling that database, pre-filling their checkout page and then processing the communication that way. And that's very expensive for the receiving company. It, you know, two, 3% is, is a huge amount, especially if you're a low margin business. It's also incredibly inefficient. And so this will be a way that open banking can attack that direct debit and card on file market with a faster, safer, more cost efficient solution. So it should, it should win across all three important pillars. Okay, so that's something we should anticipate seeing in 2023. Yeah, I, I hate over-promising and under-delivering. So <laughs> we're, we're working on it this side, but I, you know, yeah, just, I, I, I wouldn't get too impatient. It, it will no. go to the market when it's ready. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think most people listening to this will know about software and, and the, the roadmap and what the uh, yeah. potential live day and what the real live day is can, can vary it, quite a lot sometimes. If there are people that want to ever reach out so NatWest interestingly is being the most proactive bank okay. um, again this is probably really boring um so I'm sorry no, I, think so. I think, I think it's interesting so uh, you've got you've got at least me listening to it so yeah. that's all good so the open banking we're getting really into open banking here is there has been a little bit of a problem with there's neither a carrot or a stick so we have to work with the banks and how, how is that relationship and we're sort of finding it out and hopefully we're going to work together in, in harmon you know, harmoniously. But they've created this carrot where it's like, we'll build this variable recurring payment and you will have to pay us for it. I was like, well, that's fine. At least we're paying for it. You know, we'll probably get you know, quicker customer response times. And NatWest have been the first bank to go, okay, we're going to build this product and we're going to set the standards and hopefully then we'll get Barclays involved and HSBC involved and by the time that you've got those guys involved, the others are going to fall in sweet. So it's a good shout out for NatWest for being at least forward thinking. We say about the car and the stick, there's, there's no incentive or punishment for, for doing it almost, right? Right now, definitely. Yeah, we we'll, we'll yeah, okay. it out. Interesting, interesting. Um, so in terms of like accounting, and it's essentially accounting and bookkeepers who are listening to this, um, the interaction is a, a standard sort of native integration. Is it just with Zero or others, or is there anything else? So we've integrated like? with Zero and QuickBooks. Okay. And there's a company called QuickFile that's actually yeah. partly based just down the road. And then we're working with Sage and, and hopefully all the others. Everyone's been okay. very um, proactive and responsive. They just have their own backlogs to manage. Yeah. I think they recognize that it makes sense. An accountant, typically the accountant will try it themselves, you know, but maybe yeah. they'll have some one-off like VAT invoices or end of year invoices that they'll send to their clients. They'll realize that this works. And then now we've created this portal for them to be able to add their clients when and if they should choose. And that will allow their clients to get this free um, payment solution that allows, you know, saves time with rec reconciliation fees. And then you know, if you increase the um, convenience of payment for your clients, the propensity to get paid sooner just increases massively. Yeah, yeah. People talk about things like credit control and credit control is things like when you've got uh, credit to chase, that's when credit control hits. Credit control starts far earlier, you know, making it easy to get paid. Exactly. Um, send, sending out stuff at more timely, uh, easier, less ob ob obstacles to actually getting paid. That's where credit control actually starts. So getting really good at your front end of, of when you actually start raising invoices and how you do that uh, means less credit control after the event, hopefully. 
Um, so things 100%. like Crisco should make it be a lot easier, right? As we go, and, and all they really need to do is connect to us once, and and they connect their bank account, so we know where to send the money. You know, so mm -hmm. we, we're, we're guaranteed that that's the right account number and the sort code, and then they go back to zero and QuickBooks and carry on operating as usual. Yeah, and it doesn't kick anything off. Like you, you can still get paid via manually should you wish you've just got this free auxiliary improved checkout solution for those that wish to use it i know that people asked this question before like you know, how, how is it how can the how can the fees be free and things like this and is that short term long term like what's the no i know it's it's we get it too it's like we're either too expensive or too cheap so i haven't kind of <laughs> worked out too free the, right yeah yeah just too free I don't trust it where's the catch is the key <laughs> one um I think one analogy that we employ is we used to pay a lot to send an SMS and now we think nothing about sort of sending thousands of WhatsApp messages a day for free. And essentially the cost of processing a payment for us now is similar to sending a WhatsApp. It really is an API call. Whereas if you pay via a card mechanism, there's that let's assume it's a point of sale device, you know, somebody's provided you with that mechanical object, yeah. you know, the near field communication device, then you've got the company that's collecting that information that well paid, then they're passing it on to a Ford agency who then passes it on to Visa, who then passes it on to the acquiring bank. There's lots of intermediaries that need to get paid along that route. With us, once you connect to the bank, it's just an API call, which is a message going, send money there. Of course, you know, we, we run a company. So our idea is to build more value added products on top. So we'll monetize the FX payments by collecting a small percentage of the exchange rate. And then the VRPs will get charged for, but it, it's, you know, this is a simple product that we should provide it for free. Let's get some happy customers. Let's look after them. Let's listen to them. And if they want us to build more value added features, we'll, we'll pay for that. For example, the recurring payments is now like something that we are, you know, starting to charge for, but a very small amount, like as many recurring payments as you like for, I think, five pounds a month, you know. So, um, brilliant. Okay. So that's, I think that was a question that probably people are thinking, because I, I, like you say, you know, what's yeah. the catch, you know, what, 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 something's going on somewhere and I'm, I'm not sure, you know, nothing's, nothing's that good. It's free is no. what you hear a lot. So it's good. It's to technology, about. you know, it's, it's improving technology. I think you used yeah. to pay to send emails with AOL. Yeah. 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 I, I, what, when you said about, uh, you know, what's up in the old SMSs where it's 10p and SMS back in the day and all that type of stuff and yeah. had to top it up as you couldn't send one. Even when you used to only, uh, be able to hold 10 messages in your inbox and you had to choose which one to delete um, very carefully that you, to, to get the space in. So, yeah, you are right. It is like an evolution, to be honest. And there's um, probably an uh, interesting like, strategy, like payments is becoming quite simple. So it's becoming potentially a commoditized product. And then we don't want to be a commoditized solution. We want to be a value added solution. Okay. So let's charge for more value added, like, you know, complex problems rather than something that's quite as simple as payments. In terms, you mentioned a little bit earlier about the, the accountants, bookkeepers, how you work with them. So you, you partner with them. Has that been a, a main source of your route to market working with the accountants and bookkeepers or have you gone direct? Like what's been the split on that? Through channels, so we can integrate with various marketplaces and just be a normal standard checkout where you are forced checkout. But through yeah. Zero and QuickBooks, 100%, we've, we partner with accountants and bookkeepers. Yeah. They seem to be very sort of trusted organizations. They're great with their feedback and telling us like, this will work here, this won't work there. And, you know, I mean, they've generally been a pleasure to work with. And the process is typically they try it themselves they realize that you know we're a legitimate organization with hopefully the best customer support out there and then they feel comfortable to direct it to their clients as and when they see fit and you're saying that the, the accounts and bookkeepers just so I'm, I'm re they get their own almost portal and yes customer exactly. area that they can then see their clients and what's happening to yeah. them so that, that's exactly it and 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 that was um driven very much by their feedback they go okay this is great but you know if i ask my clients to send it out you know 
they've got enough things to do can i sign up my clients myself and they can and all they need to do is just add in an email and 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 that's it um yeah if they want to they can email a list of clients and we'll speak to them but you know it's you know we're, we're very respectful to that environment we don't want to tread on any people's toes or upset yeah. anybody but we want to make it as convenient and friendly as possible we'll give them the tools to go and do this given the visibility of their clients who are connected to cresco so yeah that's a really good uh that's a really good yeah. Uh, feature to have and uh, products of that visibility is very important now you guys are doing I think you've done a lot of the shows that I've not that we've had many physical shows but a couple of been so I think you've been there now I imagine you're doing a few this year as well um have yeah. you got a few on the radar yes so I mean there are um Max Tapsell is definitely in charge of all this like, I that area. His lead. Um, yeah he's great and he came from Dex we're, we're definitely doing the majority of the shows I know ZeroCon, AccountX, and a few others. Yeah. And they're great. Um, and it's really nice to meet people face to face. It's very nice to have that human connection, especially as a young company. I mean, we've got some really positive and kind sort of product um, promoters. And I don't think they'd be so generous with their time if we weren't able to sort of see them face to face. And you know, let them realize that we're a human organization that's trying to do our best at all times. It's pretty interesting when you, you know, the inception of the business and then actually bring it to life in sort of June 21. I mean, that was like right in the peak of pandemic from that March 20 through to June 21. And I think if I spoke to a lot of other providers early days, I think they would have said, actually the physical events, the little road shows, the, all of that they had available at their early days was really important to building their profile up. Uh, so for you to not have that and still do so well is probably uh, a, you know a bit of a, a hat tip to the the product itself that it sort of stands on its own two legs without all of that um well, hopefully, that right? We need, right? Yeah. so i mean we like to think of ourselves as a client-centric product first company so th there's no point in pushing a square peg into a round hole the product yeah. really does need to speak for itself um nonetheless it's great to get feedback so you know we can talk to clients we can learn more about the environment and, and these these shows are quite good fun you know <laughs> I, I think the team yeah. enjoy it you know, it's yeah, you know, talking to a lot of people and, and our ecosystems there you know there are other companies that we can work with so you know zero might be presenting and we're like okay you know, let's talk to them or yeah. fresh books or whoever it is you know. yeah no um no, fully agree. It's uh, they're not stale. These uh, these no. uh, um, sessions anymore. Chance to get away from home and call it work. And things like that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. great point. Um, okay, so if there's a accounting bookkeeper listening to this, how do, how do these guys get in touch? So with they can either way? sort of email myself at ralph.rogge at cresco .com, cool. then um, or max dot tapsall at cresco .com, and then I'll share a form uh, perhaps that you can. Um, link to the yeah we'll put it on the show notes absolutely well, up, or visit the website but I, what I'm most proud of at this company is the team that we have like everyone is super kind super supportive and really proactive so you know we're here to help at all available chances well Ralph I think we've had a a good conversation about um, all sorts, but I, I really actually enjoyed the open bank. I know you thought it was a bit boring, but I think uh, it's, it's yeah. someone to translate all that open banking legislation and framework and give a, a little bit of insight. Personally, I found that very interesting, yeah. and I'm sure a few of the people listening will, because something's been banded around for a while, but no one's really got to grips it other than seeing, you know, maybe the use of it in some yeah. small mind, small percentage of their transactions. I can go off on a huge tangent, but I'm often <laughs> told not to. So, like, come on, keep it simple. This isn't your audience, Ralph. <laughs> um, well, Ralph, thank you so much for your time today. That's been really useful. And, um, you know, I think Cresco is a great tool, a great opportunity. It sounds like you've got a great culture uh, and mindset to how you're going to build the, the product. So, well done. Thanks a lot, for Ralph, for coming on and telling us all about Cresco. Make sure you go and check them out. It's a great tool. Uh, if you're enjoying this podcast, please subscribe. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We're on the YouTube channel. Come along and, uh, and get involved. If you've got any questions that arise when you're listening, please uh, send them in um, or comment. Uh, I'm on Twitter or LinkedIn. Drop me a message if you've got any questions. I can pick them up. Uh, but it's been great speaking to Ralph, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers all. Have a great day.